So as many of you know, I have generally liked to keep myself politically neutral when it comes to um, YouTube and my media career. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. It's, it's simply because politics and political issues generally tend to divide people. And because my channel historically certainly has been about gaming, um, I've always liked to avoid particularly endorsing or saying, I support this group or that group or whatever. And, you know, uh, and that, that, that still is important to me. But unfortunately, sometimes certain events take place that are so profoundly ridiculous, upsetting, shocking, and offensive that I feel compelled to, unfortunately, break my silence, even though I don't really want to do that. Today's news, we saw a whole host of different people banned by Facebook for allegedly uh, being involved in organised hate. A few on the list you may or may not have heard of. Alex Jones from Infowars, Joseph Paul Watson, who was the English editor for Infowars, and, and Milo Yiannopoulos, who is used to write for Breitbart and is known for his provocative uh, approach and conservative values. There were some others in there as well, including ones relating to um, alleged terrorist organizations and anti-Semitic groups. So, before I continue, I really feel it's important to stress one very, very key thing, which is, and I must stress this, I despise racism. I despise hate speech, and I despise people deliberately inciting violence, bullying, or abuse towards people on the basis either of their skin, or of their religion, or of their sexuality, or a list of other things that are inherently built into a person, uh, either from birth or as a deep part of their um, beliefs. You know, that's not something like, and generally just picking on people for whatever your particular reasons, I dislike. I very much dislike. Um, I particularly despise right-wing hate speech, not only as an ideology, because that's just an awful way to be, but also because it's personal for me, because I have family members who would be affected and have been affected by this kind of behaviour in the past. So I really, really feel the need to stress this. Most of the groups that have been targeted are allegedly far-right. What's really interesting is that if you break it down, it kind of starts to unravel and reveal something really quite terrifying. So Alex Jones, let's start with him. So he heads up Infowars. Now Infowars is very interesting. It's quite a fringe news source, an alternative to mainstream media. But the reason why it's alternative to mainstream media is because they generally kind of talk about a lot of things relating to either sensitive topics, particularly to do with you know politics, race, culture, but they also talk about fringe conspiracy theories that are, in my opinion, laughable, but in some cases actually quite dangerous. Um, they're well known for having anti-vaccination opinions. Now, apparently, it's um, there's certain specific environments where they are fine with it, but they generally promote what I consider to be quite misleading information about vaccines, something that I really, really am concerned about because... Without a vaccine, you're vulnerable to a disease and potentially can even kill you. So that's a, that's a concern for me there, but we'll, we'll suspend the vaccination debate for another time. The uh, But they host that up. And so in, Infowars generally, um, so far as I'm aware, don't certainly outright uh, promote any kind of racism or or racist ideals and have not released any videos on why black people are worse than, than white people or anything like that. So far as I'm certainly aware from what we've found. What they did do, according to Facebook, was they hosted a hate figure called Gavin McInnes. Now, Gavin McInnes, you may not know, but he set up Vice magazine. Vice magazine news is all over Facebook. He founded that. Um, they're typically a lot more liberal, you know, liberal establishment. But nonetheless, that's kind of their their area, as it were, of, of remit, as we set it up. But in 2016, he set up the group called Proud Boys. Now, they, these are considered to be a neo-fascist group known for racist, anti-Muslim, and misogynist rhetoric. 
or at least some of its members are. And in particular, what's very interesting about Mr. McInnes is that he then stopped leading the group, in part to the fact that they were taking things far too far, i.e. what he originally set his group up for, he didn't want to uh, be associated with or agree with, because they were taking his original ideas far too far. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's funny how you can set something up, regret doing it, distance yourself, and then still be designated as a hate figure by Facebook. So straight away, calling him a hate figure, you could argue is a little bit unreasonable. What's even more unreasonable to me is that if you then host him once and not talk about anything to do with racism or promoting racism, which Infowars didn't do, therefore, that person has been tarred for life. And even if they actively change and say, I don't want to be involved in this anymore, it doesn't matter because you're still a hate figure. And anyone that talks to you, even if it was, oh, it really sucks. Oh, I'm sorry, I've changed. That I'm sorry, you've now hosted a far-right figure. And so you're banned as well. <laughs> so that means, just to put that in context, if I was on Facebook right now and Gavin McInnes walked in and I went, you suck. And he went, I'm really sorry that I used to, exp I set up a group that's gone too far. I wish I could change it. I hate what's going on here. I do not in any way endorse the far right. I'd be like, oh, that's great that you've changed or that that was never your position. I too would be banned from Facebook. Can you see why that's insane? Anyway, Milo uh, Yiannopoulos, sorry, I really struggled with his name. Yiannopoulos. Has been has and here's the, here's the one has publicly praised McInnes, uh, you know Gavin McInnes and EDL founder. At least they didn't say he was the leader because he also felt EDL went too far and distanced himself from the group. Tommy Robinson banned from the network. Now again, Tommy Robinson, fairly controversial figure, uh, did indeed set up EDL because he felt the police weren't you know uh, being active at dealing with aggressive Islamic groups. And then, of course, EDR got hijacked, or, sorry, or maybe it always was, by far-right figures and decided, and then he had to leave the group because they were going too far, taking too far. His own words. So, uh, after doing this, of course, naturally, because you happened to be around when you started a group, which you had a completely different agenda with and they lost control of it, um, he then, therefore, is now a hate figure as well. And so therefore, if you talk about these figures or praise these figures, that means you are also the enemy and therefore you should be banned. <laughs> now, just to be clear, you know, Milo Yiannopoulos didn't praise either of them for being racist. <laughs> praise them for things like celebrating free speech. And this is where we see a really interesting problem. And this is something uh, as well that we, we, we get here. The, what Facebook have now said is, is that the firm will remove pages, groups and accounts set up to represent these individuals and it would not allow the promotion of events when it knows the banned individual is participating. So that means now, if I again were to go onto Facebook and have Joseph Paul Watson were in the same country, next to me and I said, hey man, apparently you're racist. I went, no, I'm not. I really don't like racism at all. And I would take a fight against it. I would be banned as well. <laughs> it's so fair and reasonable. Ah, oh. now here's the thing. I want to stress as well. All the three group, the guys I've, I've just mentioned who have been banned. There's a lot of stuff they say and do I don't agree with, okay? Admittedly, the th <laughs> for all three of them, <clears throat> One of the things I don't disagree with them on is their attitudes towards racism because they're not racist and they have never, so far as I'm aware at least, uh, and as far as I'm aware publicly, expressed uh, views of hate speech and racism towards other groups. They've talked about uh, how there's a hypocritical double standard perhaps. Uh, sure, why not? Uh, but actively praising active racism is something that, as far as I'm aware, they've never done, certainly not publicly. Um, so, you know, there's other views they take, other offensive viewpoints, which I, I can, I definitely struggle with. But that in and of themselves is kind of the issue. So, what we're seeing now with Facebook is a type of contagion effect, which I frankly find terrifying. 
absolutely terrifying. Because what it means is, is that if, if you in your past set up a group that you then disagree with and then does things that you're like, I, I must criticize this group for what it's doing because I don't agree with it. Doesn't matter. Facebook still bans you as a hate figure. And then if someone talks to you about it and says, hey man, uh, don't you really hate that you've been banned by Facebook because you actually don't agree with the group you founded? You get banned. And then now, if I talk about them, or in any way say anything positive about the fact that, for example, they don't support racism, you can get banned as well. <laughs> Isn't it great and reasonable? And here's the ultimate problem that we have with Facebook. And when we talk about the internet not being regulated, what about Facebook not being regulated? And this is a criticism that both comes from the left and the right. Because the thing is, you've got to remind what Facebook is. Facebook used to just be some, some website by some guy in, at Harvard. You know, but actually now, if you think about it, Facebook is the number one social media platform where in which basically everybody uses it for everything. So Facebook has moved on from being, you know, just some website to the main area where people consume and read news, uh, where people communicate with each other. It's basically Facebook's like TV. OK, it's that powerful and major. And you're like, oh, we're not going to use Facebook. It's like, well, what are you going to do then? Everybody uses Facebook, okay? It's like saying, it's, it's, Facebook is as powerful as the TV. But here's the problem. The TV is controlled by lots of different uh, competing channels uh, who can release whatever content they like while being regulated by the government. On Facebook, it's controlled by one guy, Mark Zuckerberg, and his little group. And so whatever they decide is law because at the end of the day, it's their company. Which means people like this, who frankly have had insanely ridiculous bans, are totally and utterly unable to do anything about it, except to go, well, uh, there we go, that's unlucky. And if you challenge them, it's like, well, it's our company, we can do what we like, we can ban whoever we like. It violates our terms and conditions. There's no review process, there's no appeal process. Facebook just decides who is bad and who isn't, and then if you ever have talked to them or associated with them in any way, you are then classed as evil and bad and will also be banned as well. To me, this is one of the most extreme threats to free speech I've seen in the last 20 years. And it is deeply disconcerting. It feels reactionary, it feels wrong, and I take issue with it. Now, by no means am I fully endorsing any of the people that I've talked about. But what I am saying to you is, is that I feel this ban is an overreaction, it's unfair, there's no warning process involved, and you can't appeal it. And while Facebook has an authoritarian dictatorship like this, free speech, particularly through the biggest social media platform in the world, is almost impossible to protect or preserve until laws change and rules change, where actually people can contest outrageously unfair bans. Hey everybody, I'm sorry to break my silence, and I'm sorry if my video has upset or offended people, um, but I felt like I couldn't keep quiet about this. Because ultimately, if there's one thing I do believe in very, very strongly, and I always will, it is the free and fair press and free speech. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're, you know, not totally horrified by what I've just said, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share the video. Thank you, and goodbye.